Media reports are full of majestic pictures, and some mention the roughly 10 billion gallons of oil that lie beneath the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Uncertain. The one and a half million acre tip of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is critical for the health of an ancient caribou herd. But few mention the financial benefits of drilling there, even if it will take a while. The Energy Information Administration put out a report in May 2008 saying enactment of legislation in 2008 would result in first production from Anwar in 10 years, or 2018, meaning it would not have an immediate effect on gas prices. Nevertheless, with high gas prices hitting pocketbooks even harder this summer, drilling in Anwar doesn't seem so bad to Americans. A poll from the Pew Research Center recently asked adults nationwide if they would favor or oppose allowing oil and gas drilling in Anwar. The result for June 18 through 29 ended up with 50% in favor and 43% opposed. 7% were unsure, but that was up from the beginning of the year when adults nationwide were asked the same question. To which 42% were in favor, 50% were opposed, and 8% were unsure. Spokeswoman for the American Petroleum Institute, Kathy Landry, told the Business and Media Institute that the American people are ahead of Congress on this issue. I think the American people are looking at the prices and seeing where things are going, and they're saying, you know, we have these resources here. You know, instead of purchasing them from abroad, why don't we develop? Why don't we?、Um, Build U.S. jobs and heighten our energy security. Why don't we bring revenues into the U.S. Treasury that will be given by oil companies and bonus bids and royalties? Why don't we do this ourselves and and start being part of the solution? That seems to be good advice because drilling in Anwar has been on Washington's plate for decades. Our administration will designate as wilderness the Arctic National Refuge and stop the crusade for new drilling off our coast. Over ten years ago, then Governor Bill Clinton said his administration would not drill in Anwar, and he kept his promise, vetoing a bill from the Republican-led Congress that would have allowed it. And I knew this was happening way back,、uh, well, ten years ago, when、uh, President Clinton vetoed the bill that would have allowed us to to、uh, drill in Anwar. I said on the Senate floor then, ten years ago, I said, "In ten years, we'll regret this." It's now ten years later. So is drilling in Anwar the one solution to high gas prices? Experts say no. There isn't one solution that will make prices come down, but many long-term solutions. Daniel Yergin, chairman of Cambridge Energy Research Associates, spoke with Bloomberg's Tom Keene. Well, I love your phrase here, an ecumenical approach. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that you know it isn't a question. Oh. It's only going to be oil, or it's only going to be renewables, or it's only alternatives, or it's only efficiency. It's all of those things, and、uh, you know, I, I, you know, yeah, ecumenical is the kind of term that's come to mind that just seems to me to describe it. That we, and that's it's the opposite of this kind of either or. That there's just one thing, and if we do it, we'll solve the problem. It's sorry, it doesn't work in a fourteen trillion dollar economy like that. Landry, again of the American Petroleum Institute, also told BMI that there isn't just one solution. We do not believe we can drill our way out of this problem. It has to be a complete, long-term energy policy that includes conservation, that includes energy efficiency, and that includes alternative energy sources. But it also needs to include domestic. Oil and gas drilling. For the Business and Media Institute, this has been the Bizflog.